Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing, Case File 263. Finally, a topic that is near and dear to my heart, alien mommies. So when you guys picture your favorite alien mommy, what, what best features do you think, you know, is your typical, like, fantasy? Dan, why don't we start with you? Uh, alien mommies, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, alien uh, mommies. Lady like you said in the notes. from Resident Evil 8. <laughs> <laughs> or is it 9? No, 7. Village. Whatever. Seven? Resident Evil the Village. I don't know what number yeah. it is. <laughs> I'm more of an alien mamacita guy myself. Yeah. You know? like a, a little <laughs> curvy. Yeah, a little curvy. Yeah, a little I, curvy. I can get down with that. A little fiery. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah. Mars, Mars, Martian or something. Zeta Reticulin. Nordic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but sure. Somewhere south um, of the south of the Milky Way border. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Build that space wall, baby. Let's keep them out. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, now it's we're, what we're talking about today is alien mummies, and obviously Zell's not here. First part of the new year, he misses. Wow. Classic. Slacker. I guess the guy went a little too hard during the extravaganza and. Just couldn't, couldn't, he couldn't hack it. So, he, uh, he, he had a call on sick. Yep. Some of us aren't built for distance. Some of us are built. Yeah. For, yeah. yeah. You know, it is <laughs> what it is. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, now alien mummies. I mean, this is a tale as old as time, right? We're uh, some sort of highly technologically advanced civilization coming back and perhaps leaving behind. Um, you know, some little pickle mommies uh, for humans to uh, m- mummify. <laughs> right? uh, Tales yeah. all this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure. Yes. I mean, mummification uh, just as a, a human practice goes back, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Ar- artificial mummification, you know, kind of a, the the, uh, the Egyptians being kind of the, the, the total archetype that you think about uh, when you think about mummies, you know. Uh, yeah. It, it, dehydrating the body artificially using lye salts whatever uh wrapping them in linen and then you know placing them inside of somewhere that is uh, dry and you know it'll a lot of the stuff that the decomposition that would normally happen to a natural body uh outside uh you know vulnerable to the weather and elements then we can retrieve these bodies today and you get to find all the neat stuff that we, that we do today. But again, yeah, the, like curses. The, yeah, like, <laughs> yes. Like curses, many curses. <laughs> now, do you think I was kind of having this thought earlier today when I was trying to like, think about like, you know, why they did mummification practices and stuff. And I, I was, I kind of went on a long, uh, <laughs> long, crazy thought. One of the thoughts I had was like, I wonder if back then, you know, if there was some sort of more technologically advanced aliens or something that were vi- visiting Earth, uh, coming down, you know, meeting with the locals, and maybe they showed them this practice, and maybe this practice is akin to us, like, cryogenically freezing um, people now, where, the, you know, they say they Walt Disney's frozen somewhere, they're going to bring them back, and uh, maybe this is something where they were like, oh, we can do this high practice and they can just be rehydrated once uh you know once whatever ails them and they can be brought back to life later and we've just been destroying that practice it'd be like a hundred thousand years you found frozen walt disney you'd be like they froze him he's dead and they froze him <laughs> uh, Would you, we're just missing the hieroglyphic that says just add water yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. It's like those, you know, those little dinosaurs. <laughs> exactly. Right? What I was the thinking. little dinosaurs that you throw in the tub. That's what we're doing wrong. Like the Atacama pickle baby. You throw that motherfucker in the bathtub, let him soak. He's full six two. blown human. Six two. Six two. Right? Comes out of there. Yeah. We've we've never even tried have we tried it? Dan? Probably not. Have we tried it? <laughs> uh if you're talking about uh, <laughs> perhaps finding a in terms of a, a juicy mummy, I mean we do have the example of the one high noble uh, Chinese mummification process that we found the one that was sealed inside like the seven lacquered boxes. Oh yeah. Out. Yeah. So it's like it, mummification yeah. practices vary from culture to culture and it's not always just a single, I mean, a lot of people think it's just, 
I mean, probably off the top of your head, some people would be like, oh, yeah, you know, you just put a single person in there. But no, we have evidence and, and a lot of burial sites that where servants, animals, servants, animals. Everything. I mean, but not even just that, but uh, like you just finished the, digging um, the hole. You're like, oh, and they're like, get in. Like, yeah. What? <laughs> Uh, just think of the uh, the Chinese clay soldiers. Like you have an entire army of uh, figurines and, and sculptures, like laying to rest with a with an emperor or a, a person of, of high status. So uh, mummification is a practice that is worldwide, and not just in places like um, like we said. We're, we're mostly talking right now about artificial, but natural mummification does happen in some places. Uh, places where it's extremely extremely dry uh places with low humidity uh places like uh, the the coastal parts of peru like in those areas um it, just off the top of your head i mean you think of the famous peru mummies the peruvian mummies where these uh we have evidence to to suggest that these were it's sacrificial victims uh that they were lowered into these these caves or these um you know depressions in the earth where the they were uh you know left to as an offering for deities or or what have you and their bodies were just naturally preserved um and had a number of these and that's where we get the origin of a lot of claims of you know when you combine the the when you combine the mysterious and the secrets and all of the uh the interesting pieces of information about the nazca lines uh and then you in, combine that with mummies mummification uh there is some suspicion and there's some claims that there have been mummies of non-human origin found in these places and especially the really big announcement if people remember because i know people will be like thinking they're like you know Alien mummies. I heard something about that. Yes, you probably did, and that was probably in 2017, <laughs> yeah. where it was the big. Um, I don't. When did when did Gaia dot com like first come online? Like when did they pop up? I I forget when they got really popular in it because I remember I I remember they a got time their own Gaia. fucking com channel now. They do, <laughs> and and that's where it's, they. It's all. Let me tell you, it's ninety percent Linda Bolton Howe. <laughs> uh, but that's where in the, in the early days of Gaia.com, that's where the first uh, real claims of an alien mummy uh, came about. Now, it's not the first. Those weren't the first alien mummies. And if you're you're deep into the, the alien weeds like we are, like you've heard of alien mummies before. If you heard about the, the Roswell slides, you've heard about, you know, to some extent that the Paracas skulls, uh, those things. So. Evidence of of a a a well preserved yeah, we talk, we talk, we talk extraterrestrial about bodies baby. and pickle baby. Yeah, we got pickle um, baby. Uh, these uh, these topics and these claims have, have been made before, but in 2017, this was a really big one that came out and was on a bunch of. Uh, it, it popped up in a couple of news sites and a cup and especially on Gaia.com, they made a whole series about uh, this alien mummy that they found and it was uh, from just a just an initial glance like this this alien mummy it's like it should have it, it was something big because it's like when you look at it uh at first you think well you know it just it has these long thin limbs it's got a, a, a kind of strange looking head but nothing that looks at first glance uh you know totally non-human but then when you get to the appendages uh when you when you you know pan down to the hands it's got three digits on its yeah. hands and its feet. <laughs> it, looks like it's, it. it looks like it's primed to start the Mars reactor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and, and these law, these elongated and not just like three digits, like, like human finger length digits. Like these are e extremely long and, and uh, thin fingers, digits, phalanges, whatever you want when to call them. Just out of curiosity, when were fireworks invented? Because <laughs> we got tons of three fingered motherfuckers after fireworks came around. Well, it's, it's funny because I was going to say, like, I was trying to, like, when I looked at this and went, like, okay, well, like, have I seen this before? I mean, you know, there is some, you, if you, you know, if you want to go on a get down to Google rap. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. 
Or if you wanna watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.